Okay, now let's take a look at this polyphonic processing section that is directly below the synth engine. This is essentially a collection of uh, signal processing units through which the sample output is passed before being shaped by an amplitude envelope. These consist of an amplitude modulation unit, a delay unit, and a filter, and then of course a mixer that allows us to choose how much of each one of these individual sections we want to include in the mix. So let's start with amplitude, uh, amplitude modulation. What this does is allows you to multiply the signal or the sample output by the signal coming from the oscillator, one of the oscillators. Now, why would you want to do this? You, you would want to do that to change the spectral content of the sound. So what this allows you to do is kind of change how much of the fundamental you're hearing, add non-harmonic content, uh, even some kind of ring modulation type stuff. So let's hear this in action. Now, I've selected snapshot three in the third bank, which is called All Time Low. It's a bass uh, snapshot, very deep. That's how it sounds right out of the box. Now to illustrate amplitude modulation, I'm going to come over to the mixer and crank this up a bit. Right. Draw that up so we're going to hear the effect. And the amplitude modulation section consists of these two parts. One is a, uh, a balance between the A and B oscillator. What you're telling it here is which oscillator to use as the multiplication signal for the sample output. So right now I have it toggled all the way to A. If I want to flip it over to B, I move it all the way over, and now it's taking the uh, the B oscillator as the multiplication, as the factor that, uh, that it's multiplying. So now we're, we're set to B. If I move this control next door, which is the uh, amount of squaring, it essentially determines what kind of harmonics you're, go you're going to get on top of the amplitude modulation, you'll hear this effect. And you can see this effect as well. If you look down at our oscilloscope down here, as I move this, you can see that the wave is kind of changing shape based upon the amplitude modulation. It tends to be a pretty subtle effect, but it's good to be familiar with it, and some of the other snapshots use this uh, pretty potently. So once we're, we're through the amplitude modulation section, we have a delay section. Now this is a very powerful delay because it's tunable. Uh, but first what we have is this, draw, the, this input selector. And what this tells the delay is how much of the signal that it, that it is going to take in is coming from the amplitude modulation section and how much of it is completely dry. So if we want a completely dry signal, we turn it all the way to the left. But then none of the amplitude modulation is coming into the delay. He's still hearing it. Right, it's because it's coming through the mixer, but it's just not going to feed into the delay. So the delay also allows you to uh, modulate using the LFO and the envelope. And as I said, this is tunable. So what happens is when you dial in some LFO, for example, and then you start to crank this up, the LFO is now modulating the delay and of course the delay is tunable so if I the, the tune field here allows us to to tune that actual the, the, the delayed signal and you hear it You can also use the uh, the envelope to modulate the delay. Use them both at the same time if you wish. Now a lot of this is going to have to do with uh, the the wave that you have selected down here for the LFO. We'll get into this later because this field ends up having a lot there. This uh, modulator section ends up having a lot to say about how these signal processing units actually sound in practice. But just to give you an idea, if I move from a sine wave to a triangle wave in the shape of our LFO, it starts to change the character a bit. Now underneath the tune field is a field that is key tracking, and this allows you to select how much of the uh, 
w where you're playing on the keyboard is going to impact the delay, the tuning of the delay. So at one, it's at full key tracking. Um, at zero, it's not tracking the key at all. So it's it's going to produce the same delay no matter what key you're playing. Let's take a look at this filter section next door to the delay. This is really two filters in one. It's a low cut filter and a high cut filter. In other words, a high pass filter and a low pass filter respectively. And like the other two units, you need to have some amount dialed in at the mixer in order for this to take effect. Now I have selected a different snapshot called, nine, uh, called Nasty Buzz, it's snapshot nine in the fourth bank. And here's how it sounds right out of the box. So it is indeed fairly nasty. Now as I bring up this high cut, it will begin to shave off some of those lower frequencies. And the same goes for, for uh, the high cut. And once I open it, it's a little confusing because this is, the higher you raise the low cut, the more of the low frequencies you're cutting out. And it seems to be the case that the lower you have the high cut, the more of the high frequencies you shave off. So it's a little counterintuitive, but once you fiddle around with it a bit, you'll, you'll get the sense of it. Now these two sections are key tracking and these allow you to uh, change the filter cutoff based on where you're where you are in the piano roll so if you want key tracking on you have it set all the way to the top if you want to turn it off just crank it down to the bottom now moving on from the filter we have this two feedback indicator and this merely illustrates the signal flow so it's telling you that amplitude modulation delay and filter are all going into the feedback so whatever you dial in for the feedback up here is going to contain the changes that you've made to these uh, signal processing units now next door to that is this mixer and the mixer is a little tricky because it seems to have bi-directional controls and it's not exactly clear uh, what they do but it is clear that on both ends of the range some effect is being produced for that particular parameter so for sample for example and I've reset our nasty buzz snapshot if I have this all the way in the negative position or in the positive position we really hear that sample waveform now when it illuminates, that means it's it's right in the middle. The amplitude modulation is similar. Uh, I, can, I can use amplitude modulation both positively and negatively. And you can see through the, with this oscilloscope that it's actually changing the sound. It's just not obvious to me exactly what it's doing in these negative positions um, especially with this sample mix factor now delay you're also going to hear the effect of the delay really quite radical in this particular setting and negative as well so they're definitely different it's uh, but it's a little kind of mind-bending to figure out what they do. And of course the same applies for filter. I'm going to reset this and then we'll move next door to something that's far more uh, intuitive which is our amplitude envelope. And this of course has our familiar attack, decay, sustain, and release parameters as well as a graphical display of the envelope. So right now I have a very short attack. If I raise this you'll see that the uh, this changes to reflect the, the amplitude envelope. Had its attack change, and the and the sound really fades in. I can also manipulate the decay and the sustain and release parameters if I want more of a, a choppy sound. Now this velocity fader next door uh, tells it how how sensitive to velocity the amplitude envelope is. In, in other words, how the impact or how hard you're playing the keys impacts the uh, amplitude envelope and how it's going to work.